You gave Mason Mount his start. Yes, I football. think he's a great signing for your... Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Thank you for that. He's <laughs> he's fantastic. Well, why is he leaving, why is he leaving Chelsea? He's born and um, born and bred, isn't he? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a complicated one, and in the end, I think it's uh, he's got a year left on his contract. What I'll say about Mason is all the things I spoke about there. You talk about like modern players and how the game's changed. He is a throwback to the attitude and the commitment and the quality. The, the you know that was the, the beauty of working with Mason was that. He gave you so much in terms of his um, uh, effort every day. Uh, anything you'd ask him to do, it was like, yeah, and he kind of got it. And I think any great player has to have that kind of intelligence and that desire about them. You know, like, what do you need me to do? Like, yeah, I've got it and I'll do it, I'll repeat it. And also quality. So in terms of what he'll bring to Manchester United, it won't just be what Mason brings. He will bring loads of talent, but he's just going to go pff, and levels around Really, he's it. a bar yeah, raiser? Yeah, I, I think so. And, and and don't get me wrong, the bar raiser's already there with Bruno mm. Fernandes, Rashford. Casemiro, yeah. But he will, abs yeah, Casemiro. But he will absolutely fit in with it. If you're trying to build, which you're saying, you a, a group mentality of a team and, you know, players that are just going to give everything and have talent, which top team they need, he fits it. So I've seen some like, sort of alternative reactions to that. It's like, oh yeah, Mason Mount's a good buy. I'm, why would you pay that for him? Mason Mount is going to be a fantastic player there, in my opinion. It's really nice to know because actually I, I was a bit on the fence in, the, in regards of don't really know the character of the man, mm -hmm. and, but I have heard from inside Old Trafford that Eric Ten Hag, Eric Ten Hag is really ultra focused on exactly what you said mm -hmm. above everything else. He's mm -hmm. focused on that like core mm -hmm. values, so Casemiro, um, Bruno, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. And so it's nice to know that Mason is a yeah he is a bar raiser. Yeah, yeah. why is he leaving? Do you know? Um, Seeking a different challenge or is it? No, I don't think so. I think probably Mason would have envisaged two years ago that he'd stay at Chelsea for a lot of his career. I just think circumstances, his contract situation. Um, I know he's got a big love for Chelsea. Um, but also in the modern day, you know, I think more than more than even in my day, players do move. And I, I don't think, you know, for the challenge of moving, now it's come to that. For Mason personally, is a, is a good challenge for him. I would have liked to see him stay at Chelsea because I think he's he would have been central to it. But it didn't happen. One of the one of the key questions I'm, I want to answer, and I wanted to ask you today, is like, how would you have? What would have had to happen to avoid the situation where you had that unhealthy culture at Chelsea behind the scenes? And those when you came back in as the interim, mm. what would have? What could you have done to avoid that happening? Say you were in the, you know, if you were, if you could, in hindsight, have a wand and and correct things that were done. I get the first point, which was about smaller squad size. Mm. Um, what else? What else avoids that? Me scenario? from my from my first no, day in there. You're 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 a um, a genie, and you can <laughs> knowing what you know about the, the, what you inherited there. What would have had to be done previously to avoid you inheriting that? Smaller squad is the first thing that I got. Yeah, smaller squad. I mean, some things are just a bit, you know, f like there there are, there are phases, you know, and I, I think Chelsea, um, they won the Champions League. I left. They won the Champions League. Like three or four months after I left. And at that point you kind of go, okay, where's the next move? And you kind of go, how was recruitment then? How, what things worked then? It's, it's really hard for me to kind of dissect all those moves. You know, I, I came into what I came into. So, you know, that's, I think I'd probably be a little bit casual for me to kind of go, they should have done this, you know, like yeah, in, it's, it's a hindsighty yeah. one that's. Yeah, it's kind of me wondering just because I've been a Man United fan and I've seen that happen and I saw obviously Sir Alex Ferguson leave mm. and then we just had these 10 years of what I describe as like confused chaos. Mm. And I'm trying to figure out almost like how in a Sir Alex Ferguson situation, how he we could have avoided that yeah. if at all possible. Yeah. I mean, it's such a big figure. Um, that's, that's difficult, isn't it? I agree. I don't know enough about Manchester United, but I do. I, I can understand why after Sir Alex leaving and also the pivotal players will probably come into the end of their time at mm. the same time as him leaving to replace that and keep moving forward i mean you, know, you can there might have been mistakes soon it's not my thing but i can understand why it feels like a long period for a club mm. the size of manchester united but it just shows you that i think that how cutthroat and fast moving this premier league is because if you come off the gas gas in terms of recruitment or whatever or you have a bad time climbing back up there people think oh yeah you, you know you're chelsea you'll be in the champions league again next year or arsenal you'll be there like arsenal had to work a long time to come back and challenge for the league last year mm. with a lot of work and you know people were criticizing our like Mikel Arteta in the beginning and now you know they've worked together and stuck together and recruited really well and now they're ready to go so I mean it's not I don't think we should expect even you being a Manchester United fan or me having a Chelsea head on that oh, next year it's going to be great like it's mm. everyone else is moving forward too you mm. know so. when you get that call the interim call mm. 
you've just left Everton. Yeah. Um, you're out of work. Um, Graham Potter's been released from his responsibilities. What's going through your head when they say, we, we want you to come back in and, and take a, an interim manager role? If I was a fly on the wall and when that phone call happens. <laughs> um, you nearly were. Yeah, I was. <laughs> we were going to do this. Yeah. So I uh, know, yeah, I mean. I wasn't going to tell the story, but. Um, no, I, I could tell it for you. I was sure. coming to meet you and I rang you to say, sorry, I'm going to become Chelsea manager. That, that yeah. meeting, they, you know, people arrived at my house that afternoon. So, well, just to be clear, you didn't tell me that exactly. You said, I can't come and I can't tell you why. <laughs> then, I, then I told you after. Yeah, right. then you told me okay. after. But yeah. I'm not an idiot. So yeah, right, okay. I, I kind of inferred maybe that. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, I mean, no, I, I think probably that the, it's, it's normal that I consider everything. And, the, you know, I probably considered it as in, firstly, it's a club very close to my heart, as I said before. Um, a challenge of working and it was like we had two games against Real Madrid and we had the season to pan out it was a difficult running so I was, I was fully aware of that um, and I know maybe like you know I, I do love a challenge if that challenge had been probably any other club other than Chelsea I probably would have said no I was very happy to be at home as such in that period I wasn't fighting to get a job at that period um, so it was probably a bit of head and heart um, I'm not sure what probably the heart probably was a bit more substantial in this one than the head because I suppose if you look back again, we're in that hindsight position. But you know, what were my ne what were my positive outcomes? What were my negative ones? The minute we didn't get through against Real Madrid, which probably a lot of people would have bet on, mm. um, you're kind of into that zone of end of season and what you're playing for as a club like Chelsea, and that's not the normal Chelsea. You should be playing for something, and at the, in the end, we played for not not so much. And of course, another reason my motivation come down. So I probably could have been a bit more ahead of the game in that, whether that would have changed my mind. I don't have a regret about doing it. I went back there. If people from the outside want to, um, you know, uh, criticize or have a view on it from the outside for six or seven weeks work, I've got no problem with that. I worked at Chelsea before, I worked at other clubs and, you know, it's another experience. It wasn't my most favorite experience in my footballing career. I won't lie, but it's an experience and I have learned out of it. Not so, not so much, but I've, I've mentioned a few of the things. Not your favorite ex experience. Did you enjoy it, be honest? Um, I enjoyed the first few weeks. I felt like I was back at Cobham. I know so many people there. I mm. was like into the challenge. In the middle bit, I probably started to understand more that there's, there's a lack of, you know, what we've spoken about. Um, and then in the last week, we, we had Man City away, Manchester United away, and Newcastle at home as our running. And I was like, okay, let's get through this week because I could see that the players were, were ready for the season to, to finish. You know, like it's, it's and again, some of it I got on a human level. Does so, that not hurt you to some degree? Like, because you love um, this club so much and you're a winner. And if you see these players have checked out, you you know, it's not just they're checking out on you as a manager, but they're checking out on the club that you love. Yeah, I, as, a general, it, as a general, it didn't hurt me because having worked in football for a period, having been a player a long time, I've seen a lot of these instances and, I, and I'm not holding the players to my standard as such and and a lot of them I did know the backstory and the side stories I could get that they were moving on so you know if a player's moving on they might just not you know they might not be ready for those last few games they might have a bit of an issue or something and you know but there's no way that you you can accept that there's no, no way but but is it uh, well put it this way I, I don't want to I don't want to come here and, and shout too much because in a short period um it's hard for me to make too many statements what I will say is that I think I understand I understood the role of being interim and I understood that probably there was not much, there's, there's certainly not much to gain for me saying, oh, that was so bad or that was so bad now. Because when I look back, I'll probably just try and take my own thing out of it. And mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't want to go there. I didn't work long enough with the players to be there the one going, and I can't believe that happened at the end of the yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. You know, I walked into a position where some of them are a bit disenchanted or whatever. And I, I'm not going to tell that, that player that you shouldn't feel like this. Well, I'll try and drive them and drive mm. them amongst the group, but it's not for me to go because a lot of players will sit with a couple of players sat with me and said, listen, I'm going to be leaving in the summer. I'm finding it a bit difficult. I'm like, okay, I, I get that. I'm not going to change that in four weeks or whatever. So, no. So what was the objective then in the, in the four weeks when you're thinking about, when you realize that what was the sort of behind the scenes context, mm. do your objective shifts and shift slightly and go, okay, success here looks now looks like this for me. Yeah, in reality. And I didn't get that because it would be results, you know, because everyone would um, would judge me on results. So in terms of me, it would be success here would to, to have got better results in that period of time. 
and come through there working at a high level club again you know it's it's extreme pressures it's the media it's the players it's everything is trying to get results in games and in some games we competed against Real Madrid we competed against Manchester City we competed but you know that wasn't to be but that was my version of success but you know football is not that simple you know so many journalists ask you after if you you kind of like regret taking the job and your answer has always been like no because I've, I've learned mm. a lot it's your, it's your club it's, it's mm. Chelsea um however had you known the context and this is only something we can know in hindsight mm. we can't know it in foresight if there was some magic genie that could have shown you the context the behind the scenes the dynamics the 32 players the culture honestly do you think you would have made a different decision because I think I would have <laughs> yeah but we don't have hindsight obviously we it's a it's a magical thing that yeah but i, I think probably and, and you and you might think i'm wrong for saying this but you you would probably be taking some emotion out of it from my point and also just how i am about the challenge of going into that so if you say all, right, all the context is here frank but you're not going to know what the results are yet but here's all the context you know this player is disenchanted i kind of knew that I wasn't, so this is how it's working i'm like i would be like okay this is what i've got to work with can i get results and whether I was um, misguided in my own thoughts, I probably would have gone, yeah, I, I would do that. If I've got to be honest, I, it's too easy for me to say I wouldn't have done it for that. And and, and nobody gave me that, what you said. Mm, I mean, if yeah, you had that yeah, in an yeah. ideal world, I understand what you're saying. And again, that's why people might look at it. I don't, I generally don't have a problem with, you know, someone, how, I would possibly have a view from the outside on someone doing what I did. I don't think it's like changed the world. I think my, I played for 13 years at Chelsea. I, I coached them before in the Champions League for two years on the trot. Like, I, I don't think that, whether people want to have a view on me, I don't worry about that. I went back for that challenge at that period. And, you know, we didn't get the results I wanted. I know a lot of the reasons why. I'll take the responsibility for my reasons why. And, and that was it. You know, I, I don't have a big issue with it. It's like, because it's Chelsea, it's so topical. You mm. manage Chelsea, one of the biggest clubs in the world. And it it's one of the clubs that takes so much, especially in the Roman Abramovich, there's so much interest because there's a turnover. You like lose one or two games and it's like, oh, what's happening here? So, you know, it's uh, I'm big enough and strong enough to handle that stuff. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.